we can start abhishek okay sir i just send it to fnr group sir Good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of uh, the New India Subsection of the Academy of Neurology, I'd like to welcome you all on this World Brain Day and Week celebrations. We are organizing a series of three webinars on 23rd and 27th of July. Today is the first webinar on the concept of neuroplasticity, how to rewire the brain. We are happy to share that President IAN, Dr. Nimal Surya, is with us today and will chair the session. I'll hand over the dais to Professor Surya, please. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. Uh, at the offset, I welcome all the people across the globe for, for the which we have been celebrating in India in a very big way. And uh, with me, we have uh, uh, Ramakant. Uh, uh, Yadav and uh, Abhishek Srivastava. We are going to uh, talk about uh, the brain health and how the rewiring of the brain changes the brain health. And the theme of the this year World Brain Day is Brain Health for All. And uh, through the neuro rehabilitation, uh, we are going to discuss on the about talking. Uh, Professor Mandy Ratta uh, somehow is not been able to join at the moment. Uh, as and when he joined as a chair, we'll be happy to welcome him as well as Professor Minakshi Sundaram, the Secretary General of the Indian Academy of Neurology. So, I, I know most of us, uh, most of you know me as well as Abhishek. Abhishek is the chair convener of the Neuro Rehab subsection, and Professor Mandi Ratta is chairperson of uh, Neuro Rehab subsection of IEN. And we will introduce Dr. Ramakant Yadav, who is a professor uh, at uh, Itawa. And uh, can I have his uh, slide if it's available? Digital team. So professor Yadav is a senior neurologist uh, from UP, and he's been very actively involved uh, in the teaching and uh, neuro rehabilitation in a small place uh, in Itawa. He has set up the uh, Neuro rehab unit with uh, locomotive, so that's very commandable, and uh, he's planning to expand it further with aqua therapy and all. And he's got a lot of paper in credit, and uh, I welcome him. So he's from a, he's very humble and from a small place, so do not have a lot of show up. But I welcome you on this uh, day two of the World Brain Day, World, World Brain Week, and uh, we will discuss the panel discussion on. Uh, rewriting the brain or uh, neuroplasticity, what we are talking about. So actually the first talk of concept of neuroplasticity, uh, I have been exceedingly busy for last uh, three, four days. So I haven't made any PowerPoint. I know that Ramakant has made the PowerPoint and he would present you. But I'm going to talk to you about as a, as a, as a general person at that what is neuroplasticity, what we are talking about uh, wiring in the brain, why we are uh, working on this. So, you know, neuroplasticity is ability of nervous system to change the activity in response to uh, 
either extrinsic or intrinsic stimuli, which causes reorganization either in the structure or in the functioning of the brain. So as you know that brain is, neurons are connected through the synapses. And in the child, there are about say 2,500 synapses per neuron. But as the child grows say about from infant to a three years, these synapses grows into the 15,000 synapses per neuron. So they have been growing till a certain age. And the previous concept was that uh, it was very difficult, but previously the people thought in 80s and 90s that uh, once the brain has been formed in the infancy and the childhood, it is rigid and nothing more can be really done about it. And uh, that was the thinking till uh, the various other scientists came out. Uh, we will discuss on this. We will talk about the how this brain plasticity concept came. Uh, the synaptic plasticity is what is more important because if you develop more synapses, it's like more networking, more fibers, uh, more uh, number of uh, wires, uh, then you have better learning, better memory, uh, then there is a uh, homeostasis or the brain development. So you might become more powerful. Uh, what is the exact mechanism? We still not know. And what is the concept of this synaptic uh, plasticity? How do we study the synaptic plasticity? These are some of the research points which are of course going to be have. So what is plasticity? Is this brain is plastic? No, the meaning is the brain is malleable. It is malleability, which is easily, and it can be influenced by the external stimuli. It can be trained or it can be modified. So that's what we are talking about. Uh, if you, plastic is what word came from uh, uh, the Greek of plastico or from the Roman, the plastique, that means it can be malleable or it can be framed. So that is the word uh, brain plasticity has arise. Now there are a couple of kind of plasticity and I will come back to the examples on that. The one is uh, functional. So more function because then that is a functional overtaking as a plasticity. So one part of the brain is damaged. You know that person with the uh, left sided of the brain is lost his speech, developed the hemiplegia, and the speech area is gone. So the structure part is that functional part is being taken over by some other part of the brain through the networking and through the connection. So that is a functional. But that area which is being damaged some new wires start coming. So there is some structure changes do come. So you can have a structure plasticity or you can have a functional plasticity and they work like reorganize the pathways or they create the new connections or they connect the new, some, some young people, they can create the new neurons. So these are the way that uh, brain start taking over uh, and work. So how, uh, what are the benefits of neuroplasticity? Somebody said that, okay, the brain is neuroplastic, it is malleable, uh, it has more wiring. So what does it benefit? So you can allow the change and you can adapt to the situation. There are ability to learn new things. So even at age of 90 years, you can learn new things because brain allows you to do that. It may be a little slow because number of connections may be less, it can improve the existing cognitive uh, capability. So if you don't have much reserve, you work on that, you can improve that. Uh, it helps in recovery after any damage. So whether it is stroke, traumatic wear injury, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, And it also helps in strengthening the weakening brain. So, you know, somebody who is uh, poor in memory and then you put them into the various classes, you will make them learn, you, you know, buy use classes or whatever classes, and then they learn so that that you can strengthen and improvement over a period of time can boost the brain function so what are the various characteristics 
There are two things which play a role. It's not necessary that everybody can get the same result uh, and they cannot be comparable because there are other factors which also play in a part. One of them is genetic. So if you have a genetic background of uh, and the improvement in the family with an environment exposure. This is what uh, gives the neurons, glial, the vascular cell, which can go on to the ongoing changes and they can learn, expand uh, the memory formation or other, et cetera, can be done. So what are the limitations? Not the brain plasticity that everybody should be able to learn, everybody should be able to do the things. You will notice in your own life that uh, when you start walking, uh, you have not walked for 10 years, and then you start walking. What happened is you initially walk slow, you initially walk less miles, then slowly, slowly you start increasing, your speed increases, your uh, uh, pattern increases, your timing improves. And then over a period of time, you start from two to five, five to 10. So you can keep on increasing depending on how motivated and how uh, brain connectivity you develop through the plasticity. So, but there are limitations. There are certain limitations like there are certain movements, so certain area of brain where the movements are controlled, uh, language, speech, and cognition. If these are the areas which are damaged, these are like the final meter, you know, that from where final switch, if those are the area damaged, and this changes, this damage to the key area of brain can result in, you know, deficit, which may not be completely recovered. And that's the region that you want to prevent damage to this key area of the brain in the future, because that may lead to the permanent uh, deficit. And there are certain areas in the brain which are uh, key and can give rise to permanent growth. Now, how do you improve the brain plasticity? Because everybody now, after listening to this talk, will say, okay, uh, let's improve our brain plasticity because we can improve our brain health, we can improve our capacity. But for that, you have to really work. So you have to uh, enhance, enrich your environment. So that is what is uh, important. And then what are the things you can do? You can start learning new language. Because it has been very well documented that if you learn, learn more than one to two, two languages, uh, then there is a, a greater uh, uh, brain capability, more number of wires are developed, and uh, there's a more number of connectivity comes. Different part of the brain get involved, so that helps improving the thing. So one of the important key is learn newer languages. Then there are um, creativity like art, a uh, game, uh, reading books, uh, traveling and exploring the newer things. So, you know, you are involved in something which is uh, beyond that. Uh, these are the experiences, uh, a new work that helps in improving the uh, brain. Building. At the same time, it is very important that brain should get plenty of rest. So, you know, your sleep plays a very, very important role. So, if a good amount of sleep gives rise to the connectivity to improve because there are certain dendritic growth which happens when you are sleeping. So that is also very important for your, like it is like the nutrient you are putting. So sleep is a nutrient for your brain growth. Similarly, exercise. There are enough evidences that brain plasticity improves because there are BDNF is one of the growth hormone. This is brain derived neurotrophic factor which increases and that's the reason you, you see that the US uh, health department has uh, recommended that at least 150 minutes per week should be the exercise everybody should be doing, which, which could be anything, walking, gym, uh, swimming, cycling. So any exercises moderately severe should be done uh, during the uh, week. So that's very important. Now, people will say, oh, brain, brain plasticity is good. Then what is the problem? The problem is there can be a problem with brain plasticity. So there can be a bad plasticity. So it's not necessarily always is positive. There can be negative. And what is that? You know, those who do the substance abuse or trauma or, uh, you know, bad experiences in the uh, life, like traumatic experience, they may give, develop these poor connections or bad connections to give rise to the post-traumatic stress disorder 
and similarly lead poisoning also known to the you know grow the negative part of the brain plasticity the negative connection so depending on those can be a problem so uh, in children there are various disorders like epilepsy cerebral palsy tuberous sclerosis fragile x syndrome which can also hinder the plasticity and adhd in particular the wrong connections uh, give rise to the bad results so these need to be taken care one ask how do we Uh, discover that brain plastic because till 1960 uh, we thought that brain do not um, go beyond certain point but it was 100 years ago before that you know not 100 now maybe 1890 so 130 years ago the william james he wrote in principle of psychology that organic matter especially brain tissue is been endowed by an extraordinary plasticity but that thing gone into the cold storage nobody believed him it was only 1923 when uh, carl asli work on rhesus monkey and demonstrated that there is a neuronal pathways which are different in different people particularly when they look into the visual disturbances and monocular lesions that's where they found out that brain plasticity has come but it was the uh, michael marzinich who was a, a you know neuroscientist who did the pioneer work uh, on the brain plasticity and he got the award of carl prize in 2016 for his work on neuroplasticity so these are some of the things which has happened but the newer rehabilitation treatment which are coming particularly the cimt the trans magnetic stimulation the direct current stimulation uh, the robotic uh, fes all these are working on the brain plasticity so these are the modules which work on the brain plasticity they changes the brain plasticity to get the betterment after the stroke or after the certain neurological disorder like aphasia or like in cerebral palsy or like in traumatic brain injury to improve the motor function language function so this is something which has been coming out similarly the amblyopia or uh, strabism these all improves because through the exercises you have seen that you can improve the field of vision you can improve the strabism you can improve that uh, uh, lazy eye syndrome etc there are another few interesting things through the brain plasticity we have learned those who do not have visual uh, loss of vision suppose they have a very enhanced connection in the auditory pathway similarly those who have a hearing loss they have a enhanced visual auditory connection so that they could see a much larger area so these are some of the connection which we have learned through the uh, newer gadgets uh, like uh, mri functional mri and pet scan you many of you will recall uh, our uh, great vs ramchandran work in 1990 he did work on phantom limb and again why phantom limb pain happens is because of the bad connection uh, which we reorganize and a proper therapy with the mirror therapy and other could change that brain plasticity and help these people get out from that so these are some of the way and now latest new things are meditation how meditation changes the healing in the brain and work so there is a lot of work done by uh, doctor uh, the, the, our dalai lama along with sara who has shown that meditation could change the plasticity in the brain and similarly the fitness exercises through various hormone as i mentioned to you bdnf igf4 veg these are some of the hormone which improves the hippocampus uh, Uh, neurons and thereby helping you out into the cognition and and the memory so one really need to uh, look on to the brain plasticity as you all know uh, in day to day life we uh, learn a lot of thing we know that swami vivekanand could read page by page we know that there are some gentlemen who could do the calculation we have some young masters who could uh, tell you date and day properly so these are the way the brain plasticity work in those places people with a proper connection which is enhanced rich connection which helps and trusts the far so these are probably the the computer which uh, 
has more networking to the different areas of the brain, thereby working. And human are now looking into the advantage in various neurological disorder uh, to make the make them benefit. But in this brain week, what I'm saying is, even though you are healthy, you need to have a better brain, uh, healthy brain. And brain networking is something can make you feel good, memory, concentration, attention can be good by a proper and uh, uh, following your proper diet, exercise, sleep, and meditation. Thank you very much. I would be happy to answer. Thank you. So we move on to the uh, next uh, speaker who is uh, Ramakant Yadav from, uh, uh, he passed out uh, from Lakhna. And Ramakant Yadav will talk on Enrich environment, how the uh, you know neuroplasticity and the rewriting the brain help them. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Chairperson Dr. Nirma Suryaji and Dr. Abhishek Srivastava for inviting me in this session and to uh, show my work and uh, my other experience to be shared with you. So uh, to, in today's this, uh, I will speak on the enriched environment and neuroplasticity. So today I will be speaking on the enriched environment. As we all know that enriched environment is defined as intervention that facilitate physiological, cognitive and social activity by provision of equipment and organization of a stimulating environment. Uh, a stimulating environment actually has high rate of synaptogenesis as Professor Surya already told if we are active, our synaptogenesis will be more and more uh, dendrites are were leading to the increased brain activity. Yes, slides are not visible, sir. Okay, sir. Slides are not visible. Please click over that so we can... Sir, double click the slides. Okay. Is it visible now? Not yet, sir. Uh, sir, I stop your sharing. You reshare the file. Okay. Now you can share, sir. Uh, put it on slideshow mode. Is it visible now? Uh, sir, your slideshow mode is already on uh, in other tab. Yeah, click this. Yeah. Please go ahead, Sandra. Okay. You can start, sir. It's visible now. Yes, sir. Sir, as 
I already said that this uh, environmental enrichment is a defined as any intervention that facilitates physical, cognitive, and social activity by provision of equipments and organization of a stimulating environment. Uh, this is stimulating environment at high rates of synaptogenesis, more complex dendrites are leading to increased brain activity. And by this uh, stimulating environment, which is created by enriched environment, this causes better neuroplasticity and be better recovery from any neurological illness. If we take an example of a stroke patient, if they are exposed to enriched environment, they were likely to be engaged in the activity than those in the non enriched condition. Uh, as we all know that after a stroke or some chronic Ill neurological illness, patients become aloof, their lifestyle changes, they are not engaged in the activity. So this enriched environment is that apart from the physical and other physiotherapy which are providing to the patient, if his surrounding environment in the hospital or in the home is enriched with the other type like uh, you know, we can provide them music, video games and other things, then he will be engaged in that and will be more active. And if he, be, he will be more active, then synaptogenesis will be more and his recovery will improve. So within the animal literature, the term environmental enrichment is better established. A lot of studies has been done in them. And I have also said there are many studies for last 40, 50 years that, that with the enriched environment, uh, social, occupational, physical, sensory, and nutritional uh, this environment that is recovery in the animals. Uh, this uh, and this environment is uh, uh, not therapeutic dependent, and it is not prescribed by the therapist. But in home, other uh, apart from the physiotherapy, these things are done. What interventions are done? I will tell you later. The amount of practice in functional and cognitive activities therefore need to be increased to improve their activities and maximize the rehabilitation experiences. So we can say that environmental enrichment that enhance motor, cognitive, sensory and social stimulation is shown to increase the neuroplasticity in rodent as compared to, to standard housing. In this figure, as we see that on the right side, there is a stand in a standard environment. If these mouse are kept uh, with uh, facility to for food and water and rest, their the appearance of their nerve cell is shown uh, down. Uh, in comparison to the uh, mouse which are kept in the this enriched environment, that is multiple job they can do, then the appearance of the nerve cell changes as we see they are more than right and what this the same concept is for the human beings also so if in a neurologically disabled patient apart from the physiotherapy if we provide and this environment also the recovery is good neuroplasticity is better and other complication of the neurogen uh, neurological uh, disabilities will be less in this patient so with this background, uh, I will start my talk. So if we uh, come to know that what is the aim of the rehabilitation in a neurological disease? The first aim is, as we all know, is to promote the physical, psychological, and social adaptation to disability. Because disability has already occurred, as Professor Surya told, that once the brain part is damaged, that part may not recover, but the surrounding area and um, may may provide some more dendrites. So functional plasticity may be there, some structural plasticity may be there, and the function of that part may be taken by the other part of the brain. So by this neuro rehabilitation, uh, we look that the independence in the daily self-care and community activity can occur. Secondary complication of the health can be prevented and encourage self-management. With, the, with these aims, actually, all of the neuro rehabilitation is being done. The th therapies which have been used for the rehabilitation 
are various locomotive training are there constant induced therapy is there acupuncture neural prosthesis functional electrical stimulation transcranial magnetic stimulation pharmacological adjuvants are there but i will confine my talk to mainly these two robotic assisted devices this is new for the developing countries and enriched environment this should be adjuvant with the robotic assisted devices and other conventional physiotherapy then the improvement will be more neuroplasticity will be better and recovery will be good complication will be less so the main question is when to start the rehabilitation many of us know that in acute stroke some say that we should not start immediately some say that if three months are over there is no um, any no benefits of rehabilitation it is less so here we have also done the studies in in acute stroke and in chronic stroke also and in uh, literature also we have search that within three months of the stroke or other neurological deficit if rehabilitation is started that is if rehabilitation is started in the acute phase recovery is much more but we can't say that even after uh, three months or six months there will be no recovery or uh, what recovery has been ha happened in three months or six months we will not the patient will not improve that is also not true we ourselves has also done the studies in which after one year or two year of the stroke we did the robotic training in those patients specialized uh, specific movements repeated movement with uh, done for uh, um uh, at least two months and we saw, we seen the lot of improvement in this also so uh, rehabilitation can be uh, it is good if it is started as early as possible depending on the patient condition but if it is no it cannot be started as uh, in the initially one or two month then there is no specific time to start uh, rehabilitation we can start rehabilitation whenever patient come to us and patient will be definitely improved by the, uh, the therapies which are available uh, in the neuro rehabilitation units of the country as we all know uh, in neurological illnesses stroke and traumatic brain injury are the leading cause of the death and disability even uh, worldwide these are there in india they are much more even with the uh, optimum stroke care including thrombolysis we were then the one third of the patient recover fully that means in a very good specialized hospital apex institute also where all facilities are available only one third of the patient will be recover fully that means two third of the patient will be left with some disability for which we have to give neuro rehabilitation to minimize that disability and to improve their activity of the daily living as i told that the maximum activity is done in multiple uh, units multi center units that will maximize the recovery as enriched in environment was, which we are talking about is is a uh, provide a medium in which this activity can be performed and enhance recovery achieved an enhanced environment has been shown to promote neuroplasticity in animal model of stroke facilitating enhanced recovery of motor and cognitive function this was a study was done by uh, jensen et al in 2030s and white js on uh, in 2015 and basic model i already told that by this uh, enhanced environment and this environment neuroplasticity improves and uh, there is better recovery what are the intervention which we do in the uh, enriched environment apart from our physiotherapy things uh, usually easily accessible computer with internet connection and skype are given to them so this can be provided in the hospital setting also to the patient on their uh, mobile or some computer can be provided if they are in sensorium and apart from this physiotherapy which we provide in the hospital on in the bed side this patient can play games 
they can go access library and reading material by the computer or mobiles board games and puzzle chess they can play and music stations by the selection of the music on appropriate players actually these all things can be provided to them these interventions can be done by the patients depending on their choice if uh, some like uh, music then they can um, uh, download the music stations and spend their time if they want to play an indoor game they can do that they can search for library and reading materials other technology also they can do so by this all things uh, the laziness and the the jo time um, the time um, how to spend time by the patient who are bad written that can be improved and their brain will be more active and that will help in to improve their functional ability their cognitive ability and other things uh, as neuroplasticity is speed speed up in these cases so as professor surya already told that what is the biological basis biological basis is the recovery of the neural excitability activity in the part partly spare part because the pathway which are totally damaged they cannot be improved but which are partly damaged they can be improved if cortical damage is there then subcortical area can represent the adaptation and functional recovery can occur if we see the stroke patient the environment and this may be a possible alternate option for stimulating neural recovery through functional and the cognitive activities so we will uh, till now we have discussed the intervention of uh, and this environment the type of rehabilitation which uh, physiotherapy we can provide and the mechanism by which this environment uh, and this environment and uh, physiotherapy can improve this patient's neuroplasticity and their functional activity uh, as i already told apart from conventional physiotherapy and other physiotherapies conventional physiotherapy is available all over the india and even in the remote places district hospital pscc sc and home also but there some specialized uh, training uh, of uh, this uh, physiotherapy training which are available in the big cities big hospitals that is uh, robotic assisted uh, trainings so uh, where these trainings are available then that um, that improves um, improvement given to this patient is more than the Uh, conventional physiotherapy and if it is uh, assisted with the and this environment again then the then improvement will be much more and functional recovery will be much more so uh, in our center also in robo uh, we have a robotics uh, assisted uh, machines three machines we are having locomot gate trainer army for the upper limb training and irrigo tilt table for the lower limb so Uh, i will just give a brief introduction of this uh, robotic machines also a robotic exoskeleton is used uh, con in conjunction with the treadmill in, in this more and longer intensive training sessions can be done training real time feedback for a higher modification and compliance physiological gait pattern provided by individually adjustable orthosis guidance force body weight support this all can be provided by the machines and the functional recovery of the patient can also be monitored by the these machines objectively uh by this uh, specific gait trainers uh, they reduce spasticity improve walking ability in increase alertness strengthen leg muscles improve stamina and increase motivation so on those patient who are severely impaired non ambulating benefit of the task orientation and in intensive training can be given and locomat can be one of them it can be uh, used in the center which uh, which they have although it is now at present they are available in the specialized center only so this is the machine as we saw and see that uh, it is a treadmill with the uh, orthosis on which a patient has not to bear the weight and how much weight he has to bear that can be decided the speed of the treadmill can be uh, can be monitored it can be increased or decreased and more important uh, 
there is a screen in which patient can uh, track walking track and he is more uh, is having visual stimulation also and he can it's change his pathway also and all and why this uh, we have multiple sensory and motor channels which are uh, given to the brain and that improves the brain plasticity and that improve functional and the structural improvement in the patient second machine which can be used is the irigo tilt table uh, it is used in the patient which are unconscious uh, who cannot stand or cannot walk yeah, and then in these patient in actually in a stroke another patient we use this uh, machine in which a uh, patient is placed in a vertical position or in the horizontal position and alternate leg can move automatically and the force which can be applied can also be assessed so the benefits of erigo tilt table are as follow that it passive movement of the leg combined with the verticalization of the patient a load is alternately applied and removed from the patient leg the leg movement can be adapted separately to the patient right and leg according to the need uh, this is the erigo tilt table patient is unconscious but hemodynamically stable then uh, in the horizontal position we can start and then again we can uh, change the position also in this way actually there is uh, patient can have good adaptation complication of the bed ridden or decrease that even thrombosis and other postural hypotension they can be improved and when some improvement are there then we can uh, shift this patient to the gait trainers third machine which uh, we have and in the robotic uh, armiro is the armio this is for the upper arm actually exercise and video games are provided in them which stimulate arm movement and a specific real time uh, real life task can be given to the patient and depending on the uh, improvement of the patient and uh, we can in, uh, we can complicate the games and so the patient uh, the movement become more complex to the patient and he, he will do goal oriented task and with visual feedback and that give uh, good recovery to the patient in, of the upper leg this is the armio this machine actually we use for the multiple purpose for the stroke patient for the upper limb rehabilitation we use this in parkinson patient i also use this machine and by this hand writing of the patient improved tremors also decreased and some task specific movement were, which were very difficult to the patient there was some improvement in that and this in the stroke patient it is very good because upper limb exercises are very less and goal oriented games are there so patient can play these games for hours also and there is important improvement uh, our upoms experience if we see we are, we are working on the stroke and parkinson's disease for last 8 uh, 10 years and uh, in 2018 in bombay uh, we pre uh, we presented about this robotic assisted gait training for long term rehabilitation of stroke patient in world federation of neuro rehabilitation conference and uh, that was uh, published as a abstract in the neuro, neuro rehabilitation and neuro repair issue also in this we actually showed that even a, a patient come after 3 uh, or 6 month also and we, we do specific exercises by the gait trainer then lot of improvement can be done in this patient in irigo tilt table as i told unconscious patient we also in early rehabilitation with patient were sick also within 14 days we started this irigo tilt table exercises and in this we found that the complication were very less and uh, improvement were much better than the patient which were not provided this other um, which were provided only conventional exercises uh in, in the last conference uh, actually this uh, arm training we used for the parkinson's disease as i already told and this was also uh, abstract was accepted in the uh, movement disorder society and we um, presented this in that and uh, 
here we found that there was a lot of improvement. So even Parkinson's patient can be improved by the gait trainer as well as by new as well as in the stroke patients. So to summarize, we can say that the most of the survival of the stroke and traumatic brain injury are left with chronic disability. Uh, as we already told that 60% are left with disability. Disability may be less or more, but uh, some dis disability is there. So our purpose is to decrease the disability and activity of daily living to be improved. Rehabilitation effort during the initial three to six months should aim to maximize the patient's physical, communicative, and cognitive functioning. Robotic mediated rehabilitation is an important emerging field in rehabilitation. And this environment intervention are used as an adjustment to the conventional rehabilitation therapy. Again, I repeat this, and this environment is just an adjustment because conventional physiotherapy and uh, robotic assisted physiotherapy and other physiotherapy, and this, uh, and this environment is not a uh, substitute to them, but it is an adjustment to them. We should uh, do those physiotherapy with this uh, environment then the improvement will be more. Neurological disabled patient within a mixed rehabilitation into an, uh, who are exposed to an enriched environment are likely to be more engaged in activity. As I told, those who are not uh, engaged in the enriched environment, only uh, for half an hour or one hour, we will do the physiotherapy. The rest of the time, their activity will be hampered. Then their uh, sleeping, walking hours will be changed. So for that, this in, and this environment should be given so that by their own laptop or computer, they can uh, engage in themselves and enjoy also and the brain activity can be improved. So, and this environment is innovative interdisciplinary model of the care that could be built the effective care of the people with a stroke and other neurological disorder. So this is the diagram which I show that uh, by and this environment, we can give uh, multiple type of uh, inputs, motor, cognitive, sensory, and social, depending on the patient choice and requirement. And with this, our routine physiotherapy and uh, specific physiotherapy that uh, get a specific army or that can also be done. And this, if three are mixed, then surely that the, and then this patient will be improved better, their neuroplasticity will be good early and their activity of daily living will increase. So if these things are in, uh, done, I think that Neuro Rehabilitation Society of India under chairmanship of Professor Nirmal Surya will do a lot of things in compared to, uh, although we are far behind with the other Western countries, but uh, his initiative has just started many new things in the country. A lot of research is being going on and we should continue with this. And I think that under his leadership, we'll be um, do more things in the future also. Thanks, sir. For a wonderful presentation and highlighting how the various uh, activities could help the people with uh, uh, you know, reorganizing, rewiring, and 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 why the enriched environment is so important with these activities. What we have been doing. We move on to the Abhishek, who is the convener of uh, Neuro Rehab Subsection of IEN and uh, uh, also the uh, Secretary of Indian Federation of Neuro Rehabilitation has been actively involved with the neuro rehabilitation in uh, in India and abroad. With me, he is colleague at WFNR, IFNR, AOSNR, everywhere. So he is going to talk about pharmacology of uh, rewiring, how the drugs play a role in uh, changing the plasticity and rewiring and how improve the brain health. Abhishek. Thank you sir, for the kind introduction. Uh, The slide visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So after the first two brilliant talks by Professor and Professor Yadav, I will just try to summarize some points and then I'll take it forward the concept of how medication pharmacotherapy has some role to play in rewiring. 
So any person with a neurological problem have these multiple issues. There are problems in cognition and behavior and vision, speech, language, swallowing, bladder function, sensory problems, motor problems, tone issues, pain, sleep. So our job in rehab is to identify all these problems in detail and then treat them with a combination of therapy and its environment, technology, medications, all happening together simultaneously because they work synergistically with each other. So somebody has a stroke, can we change the brain? That's the whole whole concept. Yes, we were told in studying medicine, you can't do that. But now enough evidence has come to show that brain might not regenerate, but brain can reorganize. And what happens in the first few days or first few weeks after stroke, we all know somebody has a clot in the brain. We can burst the clot with the help of medication. We can remove the clot with a clot retreater. Or we can start some medication very early, which can help to improve function after stroke or a brain injury. And what happens in the first few months is what, what we do in rehab primarily. The additional part of brain recruits to do new function. That's called as compensation. Or newer part of brain takes a function called as reorganization. This ability of brain to change in response to a stimulus is called as neuroplasticity. It can happen spontaneously, but dies down by three months. That's why we say there's no recovery after three months. But you can trigger more plasticity by intensive training. That's called as experience dependent plasticity, formation of new circuits, new dendrite, new sprouting or newer biological treatments like pharmacotherapy or medications, neural stimulation, and HBOT. We'll see in short some of these things. This very important uh, cartoon by Ward and Cohen. They've explained how recovery of function can happen after any brain insult, be it stroke, brain injury, Parkinson's disease, or anything. So suppose this is the injured part. This is an MC territory infarction of the Parietal frontopatal cortex and the internal capsule in the ganglia. We can do something to the injured cortex. How? Because there are some chemicals or neurotransmitters, or there are pathways in brain which either works on dopamine or acetylcholine or serotonin, norepinephrine or glutamate. These neurotransmitters help to fire those circuits in this part of the brain. Now we can modulate these circuits with the help of medications which mimic the action of these chemicals which are already released or present in the brain, but because of a stroke, circuits are damaged, they can't be released. So if you're doing therapy, you're forming new circuits, new wiring, but to fire those circuits, these medication can go and mimic the action of the drug being produced there, so they can help. Second mode is the opposite motor cortex also affects or inhibits the injured motor cortex. For example, you can do a low frequency RTMS to the opposite motor cortex to reduce the inhibition it's offering. That's called as transcellular inhibition. You can do something to the supplementary motor area. You can stimulate it by a magnetic stimulation or by direct current stimulation. We can do therapy to the injured part can be physical therapy, can be occupational therapy, can be speech therapy, can be solo therapy, cognitive retraining, is the mainstay. Or fifth is, can we constrain the opposite extremity? The example is for motor function. So can we stop the usage of the normal arm? So person is used, is pushed to use the involved extremity. That is called as constraint induced movement therapy. So whatever recovery happens, works on these five, five principles. And as there are multiple components being involved, a, a team is required. Neurologists, neurosurgeons, intensivists, we have physicians, nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech pathologists, psychologists, social workers, orthotists, nutritionists, all play an important role in a patient-centered approach. So they need therapy multiple times in a day in the initial period to bombard the brain with new signals to form new circuits. So they should undergo all these therapies at least twice in a day if possible. They should undergo therapy for lower limb twice, for upper limb twice, for speech solo twice, and on the focusing on the 
cognitive and behavioral component. We call this a six, six, six concepts. Patients with stroke and brain injury get these therapy for at least six times in a day, six days a week or six weeks in the initial period after stroke or brain injury. Now, how can we make the environment much more? Suppose I take a person who has a loss of consciousness, because stroke or brain injury, what simple thing we can do? We can do multi sensory stimulation. We have auditory, visual, olfactory, gastric, multiple sensations we have. We can stimulate these sensations, ask the family to play music, show him pictures, put different type of taste in the mouth, different type of smell in the nose, use vibratory brush. What you are doing, it is giving more stimulus to the brain so that more brain signals can generate and this can form lead to new circuit formation in the brain. Second, music, very, very important role to play because music in itself can stimulate multiple parts of the brain. It's a very low cost intervention to stimulate new circuit formation and plasticity in patients with disorder caution because of brain injury and stroke. And third is, which is coming now is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It's also a drug now, as for the new concept of US FDA. And there is some uh, evidence, weak evidence coming in helping people with moderate to severe traumatic brain injury, it can reduce the edema, reduce inflammation, maybe our process. One of our studies about patients who are GCS less than nine, 56% of the patients were able to have GS, GOS more than three or equal to three, which means they were out of vegetative state if you combine HBOT with conventional therapy. So that's about neural stimulation. There are multiple types of stimulation. Primarily, it's non-invasive. It can be a magnetic stimulation or a direct current stimulation to the brain. What also commonly being used now is called as peripheral medial nerve stimulation. Just immediate peripherally medial nerve or you'll do a vagus nerve stimulation. Both are being tried now. Now, as physicians, with this background as physicians and even patients ask, are there any medications to improve this recovery? As my text of my talk, before prescribing any medications, we should first look into are there any drugs which can inhibit brain restoration function? Yes, there are some drugs. This is called as detrimental drug concept. Very commonly used drugs are the anti-epileptics, blood pressure medications, antipsychotics. They should be avoided if possible in the initial period and it will reduce the brain activation. Now, there are drugs which are being used for arousal, for speech language, for motor functions, for cognitive functions. So person who is unconscious after a brain injury or stroke, you need to wake them up. Three drugs are being tried. The mainstay of therapy is again, multi-mentality sensory stimulation and conventional therapy. But if you add these drugs, they can help only when patient is undergoing therapy. This is the first trial being published in NHM where the people have given amantadine in patients who are in vegetative state, receiving inpatient rehab on 300 mg per day. And they've shown that patients in the amantadine group have moved forward from vegetative state to moderate disability group as compared to the placebo. So we should always give this drug in patients who are in vegetative state or minimally conscious state for the brain injury stroke. Every patient family will ask, please give what to them to my father or my son or aunt who is having a massive stroke or brain injury. There are some case reports to show that Zolpidem helps. It's a medication which helps to, uh, you can say, regulate the sleep cycle. So many patients who are not sleeping slept well and became more awake the next day. But a longer study has not shown much, much benefit, but it has very minimal side effect profile. So it can be tried in patients with MCS syndrome. Again, another drug, methylphenidate, which works on flutogenic pathways, have not changed much or have not helped much in people who have severe disorder consciousness, especially after stroke or brain injury, should be avoided in the initial period. It can cause seizures primarily. Then, are there any drugs for motor recovery? The mainstay of motor recovery is our, th our three techniques, conventional therapy techniques with enriched environment, or use of technology with robotic assistive training. We all know the Bullstrom concept of 
staging after a stroke, people who initially have no movement, they are flaccid, then sparsity appears, then sparsity increases, then it reduces, it becomes very minimal, allowed to do more functional movement, sparsity disappears, no push return. This classic stages one to seven. But people with strokes in the initial period in first few months are in good from stage two to four when they are doing intensive therapy. At that time, four drugs have been tried. Uh, most commonly used drug which was tried initially was fluoxetine in a flame trial, where they gave fluoxetine, which is an antidepressant medication, which also has a neuromodulation property. For first three months in, in France in a multisynic trial, and they have shown that more patients in the fluoxetine group move to the MRS level two and one as compared to the placebo group. So it's an antidepressant. So were patients for less depressed and better participation, or there was some neuromodulation effect, which was beyond antidepressant concept, which helped is still a matter of discussion. Another drug is acetalopram. There's a Stelos trial to see, does it help? Again, people in a randomized control study, patients who got acetalopram versus placebo had slightly better recovery pattern in a subgroup profile. Again, so it can be tried in patients who have depression after stroke and can have better motor recovery. Then patients who are ambulatory or going for physical therapy or occupational therapy for motor recovery, people have tried uh, levodopa combination, dopamine augmented rehabilitation stroke called as DAS trial, with a given levodopa carbidopa combination 30 minutes before a therapy session. This has not shown much significant change to improve walking in stroke survivors. There's a cerebralization trial called a CARS trial with this drug, which is a, a cocktail of multiple type of neuromodulators, which is given in all the patients for 21 days in first few weeks after stroke. And they have shown some change in the, in the uh, better ART score, which is a hand scale called as action aging arm test scores. But it was our initial trial a bigger randomized controlled trial have not shown much change. Then people who have aphasia, they have speech and language problems. They can't read, they can't understand, they can't speak, and they can't write, which can be a mixture of all these four things from anomic aphasia to global aphasia. Three drugs are commonly being used. Uh, levodopa, which is primarily used in motor aphasia in long-term uh, in residual deficits or residual deficit after stroke. And research have shown that supplementing language therapy with levodopa may improve verbal fluency and repetition in chronic stroke survivors with motor aphasia. And mementine, which is an NMD receptor antagonist, uh, first time being actually initially being used in people with Alzheimer's disease for uh, uh, cognitive improvement. And people have shown some language changes also. This trial in 2000. Uh, eight in, 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 in uh, by the birth group in Spain. And they've shown patients when they were given mementine combined with constraint induced aphasia therapy, which means they were asked to speak, not to use gestures. People in both groups improved. They, those who got mementine improved, those who got CIT improved. Coming both of them together, they had even added benefits. So mementine should be combined people with motor aphasia along with speech language therapy to improve verbal output. Same with donapezil, which, which is ACH analog, and again being used in anomic aphasia by the same group from birth years in Spain, and we have seen that increased activation of the right frontal lobe, which is not normally used for speech language, but can take over function if you combine speech language therapy along with donapezil in these stroke survivors. So some trials of, of uh, post-prochophasia have failed. Some have shown some difference. But the main problem is the drugs are given for six to eight weeks, which is not enough. And in many trials, these medications were not combined with speech-language therapy. So you need a combination of speech-language therapy. If you can do therapy, then medication will help, be it for motor recovery, cognitive recovery, or speech-language recovery. That's the cognitive function. Cognitive function means attention, concentration, thinking, memory, planning, learning. Mainstay is cognitive retraining, 
which includes substitution or remediation, if it's possible. If you're trying for remediation, then drugs have some role to play. Three commonly used medications are rivastigmine, donepezer, and mementine. As per EBRSR, evidence-based drug review, treatment donepezel may improve covid goal function in patients with vascular dementia. A rivastigmine can stabilize cognitive performance in patients with vascular dementia, but very commonly used in long-term cognitive rehab, traumatic brain injury. The evidence is coming now for that. With mementine can also help to improve function with vascular dementia. So donepezil, rivastigmine, and mementine can be tried under strict physician supervision when it's being combined cognitive retraining. So we can summarize. Uh, we know uh, that we can reperfuse the brain in the first few hours. The swelling comes down in the first few weeks. Brain has to change itself. Then it dies down by the first three months. If you start intensive training here, you get something new. If you're doing the intensive training, then if you add medication, then there is some help. Giving medication around the patient home, not a much benefit. Always remember, if you are not doing therapy, you're causing more learned non-use. You're causing just compensation. If you can't walk, give a stick, that's compensation. We're not targeting the ability to walk. That causes further problems learned non-use. So the current rehab is to target the impairment, treat the impairment with conventional therapy, and the environment, technology, and then medication has some role to play along with that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Abhishek, uh, for uh, highlighting about the, what are the various uh, pharmacotherapy which could be useful for our rehabilitation. So that's uh, perfect. Uh, so if you have some questions, we got all the three speakers down here. Uh, uh, Professor uh, Ramakant is there, Abhishek is there, myself is there. If there's any question, we are happy to help you out. Uh, no more question. Uh, uh, the, then can I ask... Uh, uh, Abhishek and Ramakant, one question. Uh, how do you think that uh, this uh, robotic thing, which uh, work uh, as, uh, you know, on a prototype on same uh, function, same channel, uh, is going to change the wiring in the brain? Is that the uh, real life uh, exercises are far better as compared to the... And why I'm asking you is, you know, I always get stuck up with uh, this movie, Rocky Five, the one which uh, uh, Rocky fight with that Russian. One was trained with the machine and the Rocky who trained with the uh, nature and he always come back as a winner. So uh, many people may think that the machines are far better uh, in creating the wiring and the uh, you know, plasticity in the brain. But uh, both of you can answer what are your thoughts on, on this man versus machine uh, sir actually conventional physio in conventional physiotherapy man power is more used and they are exhausted and the uh, all type of movement they may not do so uh, if we uh, take a physiotherapist for half an hour and that then all movement they can't do and uh, they may get exhausted so by this robotic actually sir we can do both the things number one a specific movement can be done because as we all know sir when stroke occurs in a patient there is a flexion posture of the upper arm and extension of the lower arm um, due to spasticity and these movements are restricted so uh, physiotherapist uh, conventional may not do all these movements but by this robotic gait trainer and all repeated this movement can be done which reduces the spasticity and the ability to walk and speed is increased as we also have seen also sir so actually when uh, when a stroke occur at a particular area uh, for example it's pituitary or vessel ganglia then sir the, some fibers are uh, nerve fiber are damaged totally they cannot be recovered as you all told but uh, those functional recovery can be done by the surrounding fibers or some other part of the brain can take part of that movement. 
so repeatedly if these movements are done sir that specific movements then sir uh, and this sensory inputs to the brain are more and uh, by this uh, the milieu of the biological uh, uh, substances which are released they help in the regeneration of this uh, brain uh, tissue and help in the improving the neuroplasticity professor uh, dr abhishek may add something yeah, yeah abhishek your view yeah so so uh, robotic can have has some extra advantages first god has made hand not to exercise but to use in a functional way and god has made leg to walk not to exercise again so these robotic systems you are able to replicate what you are supposed to do with the hand so you can there's a visual feedback and it is active assistive training it is not passive movement suppose you are driving a car you are playing game of driving a car with the robotic assistants so this you do every day in your real life so first in half an hour session you can do 1000 times task specific movement that's one so one it is task specific second it is multiple times more than it happened in no conventional therapy and third it's a real life task fourth one is one is better motor function but fourth point is you do it multiple times you get more sensory feedback also to the brain so your motor control also improves so robotic itself alone will not be of any benefit because if you get some more motor recovery in in with the help of robotic you will learn the skill only in conventional therapy that's why they works synergistically absolutely thank you very much so i I think uh, it's just five seventeen. So, uh, if there are no more questions, and uh, uh, for benefit of those who were not been able to join live, this will be available on the YouTube of uh, Indian Academy of Neurology, so they can go and uh, listen to our talks uh, as and when they are free. So, this will be available uh, on the YouTube. So, that's with that note, I think. I thank both the speakers. As a chair, I we miss Dr. Mandi Rata. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Abhishek, could you tell about the next upcoming programs? Thank you, sir, for uh, chairing the today's session. So, on behalf of Nuria Subsection, I would thank uh, Professor Ramakanth Yadav for accepting my invite to speak today. Professor Surya for kindly chairing the session. This is the first webinar in a series of three webinars. The next webinar is on twenty fifth of July. at same time 4 pm it will be on cognition and brain how can we improve cognitive abilities with a brain health perspective so don't miss the, the opportunity it's on 4 pm on 25th and the third webinar will be on 27th at 4 pm again it will be a neuromodulation how can you neuromodulate the brain again at 4 pm see you on 25th at 4 pm thank you very much and uh, don't miss out on the every days i i n uh, main uh, brain day uh, webinar which will be at 6:30 pm today on drug abuse so you could join on the indian academy of neurology youtube at 6:30 pm or the channels thank you thank you thank you thank you everybody thank you tech team for helping us for this webinar thank you